today I am going to be doing a spoiler-free book review for A Son of the Storm by Suyi Davis Okunboya. I received this book from NetGalley and y'all, it was so good. I was so excited when they said that I got approved for it because this was one of my most anticipated releases of May. And it lived up to the hype for me, for sure. I definitely wasn't 100% sure like what to think of it going in. All I knew was that it was like an African inspired fantasy with multiple points of view. That is literally all I knew going in. And I'm really glad because I went in really blind and got to really just anticipate what was going on and be like, oh my God, what is this? What is going on? Like I didn't know anything and I really liked it that way. So if you want to go into the book that way, then just, hi, it was good. I liked it. Have fun. But if you'd like to know like a little bit more, like not spoilery, but just like kind of what to expect, then keep watching and I will tell you. Like I said, this is a African inspired adult fantasy. It is book one in a new series called The Nameless Republic. And it was definitely a very solid first book in a series. It built the world really well. It gave me characters that I loved and loved to hate. And I just thought it did a very good job establishing how I'm supposed to feel in this series going forward. We're following three pretty much main characters. We do get other points of view, but our three main characters are Donzo, and he is this like bumbling scholar of mixed heritage and he's kind of in like a lower caste, but he's allowed into the school that is normally for like the higher caste because of his extreme intelligence. He has like a photographic memory. If he reads something, he can fully remember it. And he's actually training to be like a storyteller. And I just found that really, really cool because he is not our typical fantasy male protagonist. He is very much this like kind of clumsy, always late, bumbling guy who's just really friendly and trusting and just likes people and wants to be liked and wants to have friends. And he's just kind of like looked down upon, but he's just always seems to be happy and trying his best. And I just love that. Like he's not this like badass warrior like he's a scholar and he writes and he likes reading and it's like your typical hero flipped on its head and I love that. We also follow Ashime. I think I'm saying that right. That is how I would say it. I tried to look up pronunciation guys but it didn't really help me too terribly much um, and she is actually Donzo's betrothed but it is definitely like a political marriage of convenience definitely not a love marriage because she does not love him and he I don't know if he loves her but he like wants to make her happy because he's like he's like a puppy right that's how I think of Donzo he's like this puppy like a golden retriever that just wants to make you happy and she is this kind of really tough exterior girl who is just really wanting political power. She is the daughter of a fixer, which is pretty much what you would think it would be like in like a mafia type sense. Her mom gets stuff done for the ruling class. So that's how they've kind of risen through the ranks because mama does all the dark and dirty. Like she gets it done by any means necessary and people come to her when they have to. And I absolutely love the mom. Like she's kind of, we get her point of view a little and I really, really like her. She's very schemy and political and she wants to raise her daughter to like be better, but like not really. And I just absolutely love Ashim and Nem, the mom. And then we're also following Lilong, who is this kind of mysterious Islander who escapes over the border in order to retrieve an artifact that was stolen from her and she wields like forbidden magic and in this society like the island people are they don't even think they exist like they think they're a myth but now that they've a couple people have seen her it's like this big manhunt and like the borders are closed and it's they've got to find her before she destroys the entire city which is like what she just wants her stuff back and oh, 
It's so good. And we're kind of following all three of them and seeing how their stories collide. And it is so well done. I wanted to kind of hit on a couple just points of the book, talk about what it's about, and then just kind of let you make up your own mind on if you want to read this or not. First is the politics, which you know is something that I absolutely love reading about. And this world is very political. We get a lot of political scheming, mostly from Ishime. And I love that because she is kind of our villainous descent into villainy type character because she's not our villain to start off with. We don't really have a villain in this book. We have antagonists, which I really, really liked. But we do get to kind of see this descent into villainy on a political scale. She is very much wanting power and wanting political power. And she's going to do that by any means necessary, even if that means stepping on other people because she learned it from her mama. And in this world, we don't have emperors anymore. They used to have emperors and there's this like kind of like group that wants to bring back emperors. But we also don't really have like a democracy. It's still like this like group of rulers and they're not very good either. Like no one's equal. It's a whole mess. So, uh, she kind of gets involved with this group and they're gonna take everything down, right? Like she's just, she's it. She's very like scheming and political. And then we have Danzo who like really does not care. He just, the politics is not his thing. He doesn't care for power. He doesn't care for any of that. He just wants to be happy and he wants to learn about his own heritage. And he kind of questions why things are the way they are but he's not really like out for political gain or power or anything like that. And then we have Lee Long who literally just wants to like leave this whole world alone and go back to her island. Like she cares nothing about them or their casts or anything at first. And she's just like, I just want to get my stuff and go back. But obviously this wouldn't be like a 600 page fantasy first installment if that's what happened, would it? And the world, the world is so vibrant and well put together and well built. Everything makes sense. Everything has a purpose. Nothing is done inconsequentially. Like nothing is just kind of like thrown in there because it's there. Like everything has a reason, like the cast system and colors that people wear and things like that. The things that people wear and where they live and the different types of housing, the different casts, like Everything is built up in this world to make sense and have a purpose towards the story. Nothing's just kind of thrown in there and I really, really like it. And it doesn't feel very info dumpy like at all because we're learning this world through the eyes of multiple different characters and the way they see things. So it kind of helps break up that like big info dump. So that's not really a big deal. I mean, we also kind of learn how like their caste system works based on different people within that caste system. And I really like how that is done because it kind of subverts what you would normally think of. And I really, really like how the caste system is done and how they're like fighting to abolish it. And I just think it was like really smart. Then of course there's the magic and we get a whole lot of forbidden magic and cost of magic. Two things that I absolutely love. I love when magic hurts you. I know that sounds really weird. Like that sounds terrible, Jess, but it's true. I like when magic has a cost where you can't just like wield it willy nilly. Some of my favorite books have where magic physically hurts you. So you kind of have to knowingly make that sacrifice in order to wield the magic. So you need to know when is a good time to use this because it's it's not a good pleasant experience for you after the fact. And that is what we get. For one, the magic is forbidden. Nobody in this one like area can wield magic. Nobody knows about it. Nobody really thinks it's real. And then obviously Lee Long comes in. She's got this forbidden magic. And it's actually a really cool system because anyone can do it. It's not like people are born with or without. Like anyone can learn it, but you have to have the right materials to do so. And these materials are kept very, very secret. And that is actually why she's there to make sure that like the secrets don't get out. 
and I really, really like how it's done. And it's just a really cool way to do a magic system and like different magics within this system just makes it super, super interesting. And I'm trying not to spoil anything, but we have different like elemental magic and necromancy and just like different little types of magic that all fit into this one magic system. And then of course there's the characters. We've already talked about them, but I love them. They're very fleshed out. They feel like real people. It feels like these are real people like I know them and I love that because one thing I hate is when fantasy characters fall flat like any character but like I really just don't like when it's like oh this is them and they're like very one-dimensional and they fall really flat like none of these characters are one-dimensional and flat they are all very well rounded and very well done and they have multiple aspects to their personalities that all work together and i love that you can tell that the author put so much time into creating this world and these characters and it is done with such love you can tell and i just really enjoyed all of their stories even the side characters we get, especially closer to the end, we get some really fun side characters. There's these like two older women who I freaking adore. And oh, I just want more from them. And I think we get more in book two, but I'm not 100% sure. But they're like my favorite characters in this whole book. Like, no, we don't even get very much of them. They are some fantastic side characters. And then the romance or lack thereof, because this is not a romance book. And I love that. Yes, we have little touches of it here and there. We have um, Ashime and Danzo who are betrothed, but like they're not in love. It's not a romance. It's a political marriage of convenience, basically. And I mean, obviously that doesn't count, I don't think, because there's no romance there. And then one of our side characters has a little fling, has a romance, but like it's not super shown. It's only mentioned like one time. And then you can kind of feel a budding romance happening, but it never takes root and takes place. So maybe in book two, there will be some more romantic elements, but really there is none present here. And I am not complaining because I don't think that every book needs a romance. I remember like at one point, like every single fantasy book I read, there was a pretty big romance plot. And I'm like, I don't need that every time. Like sometimes it just doesn't make sense to have a romance in the midst of like political upheaval and war. So it's like, this doesn't make sense. But there's a really sweet budding friendship between Lee Long and Danso that I absolutely love. I could see that turning into a romance, but again, it's not super important like it's just what it is and I love that it feels like really organically grown in their relationship and it's not romantic like at all it's just friendship and I thought it was really well done all in all I really enjoyed this book I gave it four stars I don't even really know what it was missing to make it a five star book but like there was just that feeling where it's like okay I can see it being a five star series though. Like I can see it being a favorite series as the book goes on and I get more. I just think that this first book, there was just something I can't put my finger on that like docked it like one star. And I think part of that might have been like the pacing is like it took me a little bit to get into it because of all the world building. But then it's like I really liked the world so you take what you get. So I really enjoyed this. I think this is going to be a hit. Like I think a lot of people are going to really enjoy this book and I can't wait to see more people talking about it and discussing it and see more reviews because I really, I don't think I've seen anybody actually review it and it just came out. Like it just, just, just came out. So definitely pick this one up if it is on your radar and you will not be disappointed. All right, well, thanks for hanging out with me. My name is Jessie, and I will see you next time. Bye.